Did you know that there is a great package that makes it super easy to create nice plots of the United States in R? In this video, I'm going to show you how that package works and how you can use it to make data infused maps of the United States. And with that said, let's dive into R Studio. In this Corto file, I have already loaded the Tidyverse and the US map package. And the cool thing is that we really don't need much more to make nice charts of the US. For example, now that we have the US map package, we can just call the function plot underscore US map. And if we execute all of this, we immediately get a nice map of the US. Under the hood, this is a ggplot, so we can use a lot of the things that we already know from ggplot, namely setting new colors with fill and color. As you can see, the fill aesthetic changed the fill color of the polygons that you have here. Really, each state here, all the things that you see here are just polygons that are plotted here. And similarly, the outline of these polygons is set to white, and that way you can modify the outline color of the different states here. The nice thing about this plot US map function is that all of the data that you need to create these polygons here is already ingrained in the US map package so that you don't have to think about this. And if you want to take a sneak peek behind the scenes, you could actually just take this code here and add a theme to this. Right now it uses theme void, so it doesn't show you any of the grid stuff that you usually have in a ggplot. But if you put in theme gray or theme minimal or whatever you want, then you can just put this back in and now you see the coordinates. So you see creating a map is really nothing but creating a bunch of polygons on some grid. The magic is really getting the right coordinates. And as I said, plot US map has all of the coordinates ingrained into its package. And what's even cooler, you can change the granularity of the data. For example, right now it shows you different states, but if you want, you could also show different counties. And that way you show all of the counties in the US. And you can also infuse some data information into your chart by using some data set. And the US map package has a couple of example data sets that make that particularly easy. For example, this package comes with the county pop data and it shows you the population in 2015 for different counties. Notice that there is this FIPS ID and this is something the plot US map function will need. Under the hood, US map needs this FIPS ID to map the value that you want to use, in this case pop2015, to the right county. So let me show you how you can use the plot US map function to make a nice chart using the data from the county pop variable. So really the trick here is to remove the fill aesthetic and instead set the data aesthetic to county pop. And then you also have to tell it what the values are. In this case, it is the column pop 2015. And once you do that, you get an error because it says this object isn't found. In the values argument, you actually cannot use these things like in the regular ggplot, you have to put these into quotation marks. But once that is done, you actually get a plot and you can see that the colors changed here. And you get also a color legend here. We could also change the line width. Let's put this at the top here. And that way the lines became a little bit thinner so that we can see things better. Right now the map isn't that great because basically everything is the same color. The reason for that is that there are some counties that have a lot of inhabitants and other counties that have only a few. So this is why we need to change our color scale appropriately to account for this wide range. Typically one uses a log data scale for this. And this is what we're going to do. And again, because this map is a ggplot, we know that we can apply all of the things that we know from ggplot and modifying the fill scale requires adding a scale fill layer, in this case, scale fill gradient to modify the color gradient. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that we use a log scale. That way we can already see more different colors. And also let's modify the colors so that the high values correspond to this bluish color and low values correspond to white. Now this looks much nicer, but the legend is quite ugly. So let's throw in a theme to put the legend at the top. And also we should probably add a label to this chart. As always, moving the legend is the thing that you do in the theme layer. This will give you a legend like this. We will have to work on this a little bit and adding a title can be done via the labs layer. Really, I shouldn't have called this title. It is more of a description of the fill aesthetic. I mean, I could put in a title like something population in the US, but it's kind of clear from the description what the color is supposed to mean. So let's just leave it like it is. So the first thing that we should do is make sure that we can read the labels that are inside of the bars. Here we can make this happen by making the bar larger. This requires us to add a guides layer and target the fill aesthetic using that layer. 
And in there we use a guide color bar where we set the bar width to 10 centimeters. And with that we have a nicer color bar but the labels are still terrible so let's modify them in the scale fill gradient layer. What we could do is simply pass a function to the labels argument, in this case a function label number from the scales package. This will format the labels a little bit but the break numbers they are still terrible. So let's manually set the breaks via a vector and that way we have nicer labels. Yeah, this is looking pretty good, but I feel like the text is kind of small. So let's change this in the theme layer. Let's make some room here. And now that we have that, let's put in an element text to the text argument. And once we have that, we have larger text. We could probably make this a bit larger even than that. So let's make this to 16 here. We can also make this here a little bit larger. And with that, we have a nice data infused map of the US. And the cool thing about this is that it wasn't that hard to create this. Most of the heavy lifting was done for us by the US map package. All we had to do was to call this plot US map function and we immediately had a map. We could infuse it with data by sticking data into the data argument and setting the values there to the column that we want to use. But of course this required that inside of our data set we have the FIPS code of the counties that we want to use. This is something we will have to make sure with the data that we want to use with our US map that we formatted it nicely so that plot US map can work with that. So that's how you create a nice map of the US. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. And as always, you can find the whole code that I have shown you in this video inside of the blog post that we link to in the description of this video. Have a great day and see you next time.